Hey, my name is Happy. I help candidates in .NET interview preparation. We will explore this interview question today. Let's start. Here is a question on a very important file in ASP.NET Core and that is a startup.cs file. What is the role of startup.cs file? Let's see the code of the startup.cs file first and then we will try to understand from top to bottom. Here you can see the code block of a typical startup.cs file in an ASP.NET Core project. See, here we have three main methods. Startup constructor, the second one is configure services method and the third one is configure method. So these are the three main methods of the startup.cs class. The startup.cs class will do what these three methods will do. So let's see what they are doing. First is a startup constructor. A startup constructor will set the configuration related things with the help of I configuration interface. For example, if you have any database connection string in app settings file, then you will can easily get here with the I configuration interface. And then that database connection can be used anywhere in the application. If you know about dependency injection a little bit, then you remember how we inject the dependency through the constructor, right? Here, I configuration interface is the dependency and, and as it is used, because it is used to read settings and connection strings from the app dot settings, uh, sorry, app settings dot JSON file. So normally in MVC, we inject the dependency in every controller. But in .NET Core, we have the facility to inject the dependency in a startup class and then we use it in controllers via interface. So I have created a question, separate question on dependency injection where I explained end to end use case of dependency injection in .NET Core. So why, what is dependency in, in, injection and why it is needed that is explained there. So after the constructor, next we have this configure services method. Configure services method configures the services which are required by the application. Uh, for example, see right now we have created a ASP.NET Core template application, right? And we automatically get this services dot add controllers with view. This is automatically added into it. That means you can use views with the controller in this application. If this is a web API, then this add views are not required because web APIs do not have views. Uh, let me show you the same thing in the code also in the Visual Studio. See, here is our startup.cs file and here is the add controller with views. So what this will do, if we will have this, then it will run the views. Let me show you. See, this is the view which will be the output of this application. And this view is coming because of this add controller with view service is added in the configure services method. If we will now remove this service from the configure services method, then it will show an error. So I commented it and now I will run it. So this will sh not show the view because that service is not added in the configure services method. See here we will get this error unable to find the required services. Please add all the required by calling, calling the I service collection inside this, this configure services method. So this is the purpose of the configure services method to add the required services by the application. Now the next thing which we have in the startup.cs file is the configure method. Now configure method defines the application request handling pipeline as a series of middleware components. So all these methods inside this configure method are middleware components. So this use HTTP redirection, HTTP, uh, sorry, static files. These are all middleware components. So these are the part of the configure method. 
you might still have some conf confusion about these methods and the middlewares uh, don't worry we will discuss these configure services and configure methods in detail in upcoming questions also so at, at last we, we can revise the flow so program.cs file is the entry point of the application via the main method and then it goes to the startup class uh, this is startup class and where it have this startup constructor which is the first one which will be executed then it will go to the configure services method and check the services which are required it is not necessary that all services will be executed only those will be executed which are required by the request then it will go to the configure method and each uh, method or we can say the middleware of the configure method will be executed uh, because it is the part of the request because it is the it is the part of the request pipeline so there is one note here from dotnet 6 the startup.cs class have been removed and its contents are merged in program.cs file only uh, but I think at, until .NET 5, they are both separate files. Uh, I think, I hope you have a, now a basic understanding of a startup class. If you have any question about this question, then please let me know in the comment section. And I will try to reply as soon as possible.